Let's go. And we will sing. Oh. Today has for its topic God's stand standard for peaceful coexistence. God's standard for peaceful coexistence. And the text is from Deuteronomy. You know, we are still in this Deuteronomy, we're in chapter 21 now, and we are taking our text for today, beginning from the 15th verse. So let's go. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the first son be hers that was hated, then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn, by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength, the right of the firstborn is his. This is the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. When you discuss about God's standard for peaceful coexistence and you juxtapose that theme with this story, what comes to mind straight away is equity that you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, not minding whether you like Caesar or you like the descendants of Caesar. What this story or what this um, piece is about is Moses still talking to the children of Israel. I've explained that several times, but perhaps today may be your first time joining us in this fellowship on your live boy today, then I need to also let you know, and if you've been with us all along, I need to remind you that here, Moses was talking to the children of Israel and presenting the law to them the second time. That is why it is called Deuteronomy. Presentation of the law the second time. And this was the last sermon he had with them. This was the last gathering he had with them. So he would try to explain every detail of how they would behave whenever they got to the promised land. And part of that behavior that Moses presented to the children of Israel that he expected of them, or let me say that God expected of them and Moses was explaining to them, is that there should be equity in all that they do, that they should give to whom anything is due, not minding whether the person behaves one way or the other. And that is equity before the law. I've always said it, that God may not necessarily be fair because he says I'll be merciful to whom I'll be merciful. And he says it's not of him that wills or that wrongs, but of God that shows mercy. But God is just. If you fulfill any law that he puts down, he recognizes it and he makes it to be. And this is what Moses is telling the children of Israel here. If a son is of a particular wife, at least in those days when they married those many wives in the land of Israel, whether you, you love the mother or you didn't like the mother, whatever belongs to him should be given to him. And that is what should still happen today, whether in Christendom 
or in general affairs of anywhere in the world. And that is what God expects that even rulers of nations should do. It should not be about who is from their clan or who belongs to their religion or who belongs to their political party. Whatever is due to anybody should be given to such a person and nothing should be done such that you show favoritism or you show particular inclinations as if you want to make some to enjoy and then you want to make others to suffer. And that is why you will find in a country like Nigeria today, a lot of people are talking about the situation of things that it seems to them that the government of the day has an inclination more to a particular set of people or to a particular religion and that is not the same with what God expects of us. So it does not matter whether the people in authority are all Christians or not all Christians. There are Christians that associate with them. They are in the courts of the kings. So let them hear this word and take to the kings the message of the Lord that there should be a standard that will lead to peaceful coexistence amongst all the people of any nation. And that is equity, giving to anybody what is due to him. Don't take from he to whom you are supposed to give and then give to another from whom you are supposed to withdraw. Whatever is due to anybody, give to him. And that is why we as a church, if you are a Christian and you are listening to me, we should be the standards. We should be the examples to let the world know what God's standard is for peaceful coexistence in your church. Are you also maintaining God's standard for peaceful coexistence? Are you blessing everybody that requires to be blessed? Or is it only those that come up with uh, huge tithes and offerings and appear to be highly placed people in the society? Those are the only ones that you bless with your prayers. Those are the only ones that you make visitations to. There's something wrong somewhere, then you are not being a good example to the government of the day, so that when the government of the day be begins to misbehave by having favorites, by having clans, by having uh, people of their political parties, by having people of their religion to be favored above others, then you are not making way for peaceful coexistence because that is not what God expects of you. It's not only in the church. What is happening in your organization? What is happening in your school? What is happening in your place of work? Where you have some measure of authority, are you allowing for equity to be well established? If there is equity, then brotherly love will continue because that is what is in Hebrews 31 that you should let brotherly love continue. And I love the way it is put further in Romans 12 verses 9 and 10 that you should in honor prefer one another so that even if it comes to a situation that you need to even concede to others some of your rights, it should not be a big deal to you. I'm impressed, for instance, anytime I read the story of Abraham and Lot in Genesis chapter 13. What Abraham did was to give Lot what he thought he first preferred. And he gave that to him and that eventually led to peaceful coexistence between him and Lord, and between his herdsmen and the herdsmen of Lord. So, children of God, if you are listening to me, let brotherly love continue to the extent that you first arrange it such that you allow God's standard for peaceful to coexistence to be your own standard of judgment. And if you belong to any organization, it doesn't matter what the faith of the person who is the head of that organization is, God puts you there so that you can sing the song in the ears of that person, so that you can pray for that person, that that person will fear the Lord and raise up God's standard for peaceful coexistence so that it can be well with all of us. I pray it will be well with you, and I pray it will be well with me. I pray it will be well with this country called Nigeria, where I am. I pray it will be well with you in all nations of the world, wherever you may be, that God will inspire our leaders, or at least those amongst them that are called by the name of the Lord, to raise up that God's standard for peaceful coexistence so that it can be well with all of us. I pray in Jesus' name. Well, we are discussing God's standard for peaceful coexistence. Do you know that God? Do you know God the Father? This is the season of Trinity. 
Do you know God the Son? Do you know God the Holy Spirit? Of course, God the Son is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And those that are associated with him are called Christians. Are you a Christian? If you are not sure that that answer, the answer to that question is in the affirmative, then I invite you today that you come and join us so that you can also begin to learn God's standard for peaceful coexistence and key into it and make it a lifestyle for yourself. Do you want to join us? It's simple. It's not that difficult. All you need to do is say this prayer after me now. Say, Lord, I come to you today. I have just been blessed by the word that you have sent on your standard for peaceful coexistence. Therefore, I want to also be called by your name. I want to renounce my past. I want to ask for forgiveness. I want to accept you into my life, Lord Jesus, today. Therefore, forgive me. Rewrite my story. Accept me into your kingdom. And let me begin today to also learn about your standard for peaceful coexistence. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. To that prayer, if you said it, welcome to the kingdom. So join the rest of us now. So everybody that is part of this fellowship one way or the other, say this prayer after me quickly. Say, Lord, I pray to you today to give me the grace to tap into the knowledge of equity, which is your standard for peaceful coexistence. Let this begin to reign not only in my heart, but in my community, in my church, in my place of work, and most importantly, in my nation, so that those that require or that deserve anything will get it because you will let the hearts of kings and princes be attuned to equity, I pray in Jesus' name. So go out today, do everything that you can to let authorities know that there is God's standard for peaceful, peaceful coexistence and that that is equity. Work for it, pray for it, and it will be well with you. God bless you. I judge you faithful. I call you faithful.